Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. X coming at you with another Wargaming Miniature video. We're starting a new series. This one's going to be called Bolt Action Boot Camp. In this first episode, what we're going to be talking about is in these episodes, we're going to take the rule book and we're going to go chapter by chapter. Each one of these boot camps will focus on an individual chapter, uh, getting you ready. To play bolt action. Also, if you've never played bolt action, it'll kind of give you an idea of what the rules are like. And if you're an experienced bolt action player, maybe you'll get some insight from a fellow bolt action player. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about basic supplies. What you need to play bolt action. The very first thing you need is figures, of course. You're going to need an army obviously. We'll get into building an army uh, towards the last chapter because that's where all the army lists are located, but uh, you'll also need terrain. You can play on just a table, no problem, but uh, it's more appealing and the whole reason why you get into miniature gaming is for the 3D aspect of the terrain. Uh, you don't have to have the greatest terrain in the world, you don't have to have, you can, you can use like a book underneath a, a tablecloth to represent a hill. You can have hedges made out of lichen. You can do roads by painting on to your tablecloth or your felt battle mat or whatever. You can, terrain is a totally different aspect of what we're talking about. We're talking about the bold action rules. You'll need some way to measure distances. Uh, the most popular way is a tape measure. You'll need to know how many inches of movement you have and the ranges of your weapons and things like that. So you will need some way to measure. A 12 inch ruler will suffice just fine. Uh, if you've got a yardstick, uh, a, a three foot yardstick, that would actually be better because a lot of the weapons have like a 36 inch range. If you have a tape measure, that's fine. Uh, if you watched a previous one of my videos, we've done range rulers. Okay, these are uh, rulers with various ranges on them to let you know how far your opponent is. You will need dice. Uh, when you roll, your, and the dice I'm talking about are simple D6 dice. That's what you're going to need. You're going to need a number of D6 dice. Uh, how many? Well, that based on that really is based on how many dice that your units can generate when they shoot, uh, like one for a rifle, maybe five or six for a machine gun, you know, and uh, if you have like 12 guys in a squad, and uh, so you're going to need to roll 12 dice, uh, unless one of them's got a machine gun, then you'll need to roll more than 12 dice, so I recommend getting a good amount of dice. I recommend, like, if you get a Chessex a brick of dice, right? This has got 36 dice in it. That's going to be way more than enough than you're ever going to use. Okay? So just, and these, this is like, what, seven bucks. I grab one of these, you'd have 36 dice. But you know what? You probably got a Monopoly game at home. You probably have a Risk game at home. You probably have a variety of different board games at home. If you need to, just go ahead and loot those dice. If you're already a war gamer you, or a D&D player, you probably already have like a million dice anyway. So don't worry about it. But all you really need are D6. Uh, yes, there's D2 rolls. There's D3 rolls. Uh, but don't worry about that. You Like if it's a D2, you just go 1 to 3, 4 to 6. And if it's a D3 roll, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Exactly. Right? Uh, there's going to be like D6 plus 1. There's going to be two D6 rolls. All that stuff. Okay, now here's here's something that's unique to bolt action, and that is the order dice. Okay, the order dice, if you notice, they are six-sided. And there are six different orders, and if you wanted to, you could have a, a different colored die for each side, right? Like, I've got my greens for my American troops, and i got my grays for my German troops. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could put... Well, that die just went flying. If I wanted to, I could put a gray six-sided die in the bag, and I could put another six-sided die in the bag, and use and use this setup if, if you don't have the official order dice. Okay, and then 
each one of these numbers on the die will represent an order, which one is fire, two is advance, three is run, four is ambush, five is rally, and six is down. So like if I had a six on that unit, everybody would know that they were down. Or you could use the official die, and it's down. Okay, you will need some kind of cup, bucket, hat, bowl, or most popular, a bag to put those order dice in. Because if you have, let's say, you've got 16 units on your side, and he's got 15 units on his side, he'll put his 15 dice in the bag, you'll put your 16 dice in the bag, and we'll go into that later, but you combine them into a bag, and I'm, I just use a simple Crown Royal bag. That's me. But you can put, you can use a cup, a bowl, a, um, anything really. Anything where you can't look into it. And then once you put the dice in the bag, you shake it up, you pull one out. All right, now you're going to need a variety of other just odds and ends types markers. But primarily, there's one marker you'll absolutely, absolutely have to have, and that is a pin marker. You'll need to have a, quite a few pin markers to go around because if, hypothetically, back in that last scenario, if you had 15 units on the table, they each could be pinned, right? So you, they would each need to have their own marker. But if, uh, if you're using a, a, a marker and not a die, you'll need more than 16 because that one unit, could, uh, one of your units could have three, four, five, six. He could have 10 pins on him. Actually, if he has 10, he's probably eliminated. But you could have a lot of pins per unit. Usually, I haven't seen anybody get more than about six pins. Uh, that's in a normal game. Uh, plus, you'll have units that are pinned and other units that are not pinned. So you'll probably never need a total of 16 pins, but uh, it's good to have them just in case. Okay, how I got started was I used a red die to represent how many pins was on a unit. So like if this unit had three pins, I would put a little red die next to them saying that they've got a three on them. That's three pins. Well, I found that the, that system of using a die, and red is a good good color for pins because that denotes like badness, right? Uh, I found that using a die to adjust the number actually took too much time, and it's easier to just pop down a token. Like this guy's got one pin, this guy over here's got three pins. And then if you remove a pin, you just take one off. Or if you need to add two pins, you just add two pins. It's so much faster to, and it's easy math. It's like, okay, two, three, duh, right? You don't have to look at the die. If you're using a die, you've got to adjust where the die is, and you got to look for what the number, where's my five? I can't find, oh, there it is. You know, and it just takes too much time for that. But, uh, and I'm all about speeding up a game. So just use tokens. Now, I'm just using simple uh, quarter-inch wooden blocks that have been painted uh, various colors. Like, I use another color to represent hidden, you know, or another color to represent, you know, whatever. So you just have a bunch of different colored blocks, and I just use red for pins. Boop, pins. They make pin markers. Uh, they have these uh, helmets on the buttstock of a rifle stuck into the ground. They look really awesome, but they look like they're top-heavy, and they're 28 millimeters, so they're actually out of scale to my troops. My troops are 20 millimeter. And then um, they also make these little blast markers. They make these little blast markers, and they make these little helmets. Uh, and that's that's great. Go ahead and use those if you want. Okay, the last piece of material that you're going to need that's not really discussed in this chapter, but I already know that you do need it, is a blast template. Okay, uh, there are four sizes of blasts. You've got the one inch, the two inch, the three inch, and the four inch. They make a template that it has two circles. It has an outer circle that is four inches and an inner circle that is three inches. And then the second little piece that's attached to it has an outer circle of two inches and an inner circle of one inch. So technically you're getting a one, two, three, four inch template in this little figure eight device. Um, I'm an old Warhammer player. I, I've played Warhammer for a long time. Now, do I need a one inch template? Not really, but I do have it. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you my one inch template. Okay, this is an old 
Warhammer Fantasy blast marker, right? And this is a one inch circle on the inside, and this is a three inch circle on the outside. So this is one and a three, and if I like green, I can go green. But yeah, it's one, you know, for the plague and vomit and stuff. But okay, so we got uh, one and three right there. By the way, I used to have these old plastic templates for, for Warhammer. This is your three inch template. This is the three inch template, same size as that. So if I want to use this to represent a three inch template, I could do that. They also have a two inch blast template. Came out of the same kit, all right? War, old Warhammer Fantasy cardboard two inch template. Uh, they do not have a four inch template. Warhammer had this template that was like five inches. It's too big. I play another game called Operation Overlord. Well, I used to play it. I don't play it very much. Uh, they have a template that is four inches. So I just cut it out, laminated it. Now I got my four inch template. So technically, I have a one, a two, a three, and a four inch template. So if there's a big blast, you can use that. You know, if there's a smaller blast, use the little piece inside there. You know, so basically I've got all my templates right there. And you can make these. Just make some circles, one, two, three, and four. Cut them out. You can cut them out of uh, backer board. I make a lot of my terrain out of backer board. You could, you could cut some two-inch circles out of that. You could go to Litco. Litco Arrow makes a bunch of uh, templates. They, they make one, two, three, four. Uh, four inch circle templates. They make clear ones that you can see through so you can put them on top of your troops and you can actually see down inside. They even have this one template. I'm thinking about getting it. It's a five inch circle. I do believe it might be a four inch circle and it has it's clear but it has a three inch circle a two inch circle and a one inch circle engraved in it. So when you're holding it over you could use it's one template and does it all. All right, now that you've got all the equipment you need, yeah, come back and check out our next video, which is going to be Conventions of War. It's going to combine three chapters into one because they're all so short. All right, I'll see you on the table.